stay tuned because there's some big things coming from TGA. We want to offer fun things, have a community, uh, whether it's accessories, like we've had a lot of plants coming down the Ruby side, simply just grading. And we have some major plans uh, in the pipeline. All you guys have to do is follow our socials and you'll see the rise of TGA globally. I grew up in New England my whole life, right? Originally from Massachusetts, now I live in New Hampshire. So I've been here my whole life. Uh, I started collecting when I was very young. I would say 1988, if I remember correctly, I was only six years old. Yeah, I started collecting in 1989, I was seven years old. But my grandfather at the time would go on walks because uh, that would be one of his daily activities because unfortunately he had a heart issue. So we'd walk every day and on the walk, we would go by the local corner store and I'd get the 50 cent packs or probably even quarter cent packs then of the 88 tops or 89 tops, whatever it was. I remember just going to the local card shops. I think I spent maybe 50 cents or a buck on a pack of those upper decks and uh, just ripping and ripping, trying to get those Ken fees. But it just took off from there, right? So we collected anything and everything, mostly sports cards, but I always liked some of the weird stuff back then too, like the Harley Davidson cards, if anybody remembers those, uh, some of the Marvel stuff. And the scene back then, listen, we all know the 80s and 90s was the quote unquote junk era. Although the time, you know, in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a lot of mass production, but it was still a lot of fun. So cards were everywhere, you could get it anywhere, Rite Aid, Osco Drug, if anybody's even heard of those places, Vista Foods, you could get the cards anywhere, but I've been collecting them for a long, long time. You know, I'd start building out team sets, you know, organizing my cards, you know, get my Red Sox cards sorted out. Um, but you know, it was fun. Favorite players back then, you were Mike Piazza was my guy. Not just because of his great hair and Pert Plus commercials. He's destroying his hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Pert Plus, more than a shampoo. But, you know, as a great uh, hitter, right? He was one of the best hitters uh, of all time for a catcher. So Mike Piazza was by far my guy. And then a little, little later on would have been Grant Hill in basketball, but those were by far my two favorite guys, bar none, to collect when I was that age. I think I made a lot of terrible trades with him, actually. He took advantage of me because I was collecting guys that weren't as good. And I remember trading him like Jordans for Latrell Spreewells and stuff, but uh, it's all good. It was fun. And that's what, uh, what really what TGA is trying to do now is kind of inject some of that fun back into the hobby and doing some of the innovative things that we're doing, you know, with the peel reveals and the mystery packs and things like that. So um, just all about having fun. Yeah, growing up, I definitely envisioned uh, a scenario where I'd be in the car industry in some capacity. I always thought that, you know, Jason and myself would end up owning a card shop, uh, given the, the massive collections that we had. Um, Never thought I'd be into grading. Although, you know, for a long time growing up, like grading wasn't really a thing, you know, in the in the 90s, like you didn't really see grading, it wasn't really prevalent. So um, I'm extremely excited that, you know, we found an opportunity to come in and, and transfer all this knowledge and the passion that we have for the hobby into what we're doing now with TGA. It was all about the hobby for me, not uh, a business or, or, or money down at that age. Even through my teens and my 20s, you know, when I was still collecting, uh, it never stopped. And I was in the automobile business for 20 years. I never thought about once that I would ever do this. And then, of course, the bubble happened in, in uh, 2021. You have some of the bigger companies who got backed up and now things became less and less affordable for the, the hobby than it, than it needed to be. So I think it, it spiked my interest because I never, I always had a passion for cards since, again, I think I said earlier, uh, well, 1988, roughly again, six years old. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, we started talking about, you know, like we should take this to the next level. We should do something with with the knowledge that we've gained. Um, and that's when we really started talking about grading and grading specifically because at the time we, we could no longer get our cards graded or they were taking months and months and months to get back. These turning around times are getting crazy. Uh, prices are getting unaffordable. And so we decided, you know what, that's a problem out there in the community. And if we can come together and come up with an idea that's gonna solve a problem, I think we might have something. And so then we started seriously talking about, you know, TGA and creating TGA. We wrote it on a piece of paper um, that TGA is born. It was January 28th. Uh, we have it written down somewhere and framed the exact date in his office at his house on chicken scratch paper while I'm gonna own the beer when we're gonna start the company. Here we are a year later.
you know, doing 1,000 to 1,500 cards a week, just having fun. So expectations was this, right? The card industry is booming. I thought this was going to be, I'm a sports guy, first and foremost. I thought I would get in here, get into sports cards, and it was just going to blow the doors off because the, the, the card industry in sports is huge. Little did I know two things, that everybody else was gonna open a grading company just like us, right? So the competition went through the roof and there's plenty of options out there and there's plenty of good ones and you know everybody should choose which one they like better regardless of what other people say. So that's one thing I didn't expect to happen. Also, I didn't expect to meet A-Drive, as you know, one of our partners in the Pokemon world. And I didn't expect Pokemon to go like a rocket ship for us. You know, I was, again, being the sports part guy, I was a little, I was a little odd and I was impressed by the support from the Pokemon community and how fun and how much I overlooked Pokemon all these years because I was so narrow-minded to the sports world, which I still love. Uh, so I would say those are the two biggest surprises that I had. As far as goals, yeah, Mark and I, did, you know, when we started this, we expected this to grow at a normal pace, we didn't expect it to take off and get the support that we, we did, which has been fantastic. Thank you again to the community. Um, so, you know, it's great. And of course our company's grown from, you know, two employees, excuse me, three employees from day one to 16 employees today, you know, in the time frame of a year. So I think it's all great stuff. Yeah, we had expectations and we've definitely hit those expectations. The goals that we set is, you know, within a year, we want to be doing a thousand cars a week. Um, and when we launched, we were doing a few hundred a week. And then after a couple more months, we realized, you know, we're at that five, 600 mark. And then, you know, like I said, here we are today, we're doing 1,000 to 1,500 cards a week, which is um, over what we had projected. So we're, we're in good shape there. And, you know, I see us by the end of the year really hitting that 2,000 cards a week number. You know, we look at the competitive landscape when we decided to, to make this a real thing, and that's part of the reason why we were so motivated to, to launch and launch quickly because there was plenty of people out there looking at cards great that they just couldn't do it. We want to be TGA. We don't want to be like, you know, PSA, BGS, SGC, all awesome companies and, you know, pioneers of the industry, BGS and PSA. So give them credit where credit's due. But TGA wants to be its own company. We want to be more than a grading company. We want to offer fun things, have a community, uh, whether it's accessories, like we've had a lot of plants coming down the road besides simply just grading. And, you know, I look at um, HGA as a really good example of a company that came out there at a great time with a neat, innovative product, right? You know, with the, the labels that they had. And we saw an opportunity to kind of come out with something similar, but kind of keep it a little bit more clean, in my opinion. Um, and focus on not just getting a card graded, but getting a card graded and elevating the presentation of the entire card. So you can have that card graded now and feel really good about showing it off. Before HGA came out, nobody really talked about labels. Nobody cared about labels, um, but they came out and they did a good job. And I feel like it, it kind of paved the, the way for companies like TGA to come out and do something similar, really kind of find our own lane and, and run with it. But you know what we learned from some of those guys were first and foremost the grading scale, which I put together, uh, learning the different the, the different ways that they do it. We made it a little bit harder than the top, the top two big companies because we understand that we don't want somebody's you know ten down the road to be a population of X amount. You know, if somebody has that ten, we want it to be a true ten. We don't want them to be able to go to eBay or somewhere and go, wow, there's thirty thousand of this ten out there. Using that as a crazy example, even thousands of that that 10, right? Because I think once you get to the point of, it's so easy to get a 10, well then that devalues everything else, including the 10s. And what we also learned from them was, and I think it's nobody's fault, the pandemic nobody could have called for, but communication is awful, right? Because maybe because they're so big, I don't know. Uh, communication is awful, everybody, can, you can go on your social media and see that. And turnaround times got affected greatly because of it. And that's one thing that we pride ourselves on, is turnaround times and, um, affordability right for the hobbyists there's a lot of people coming into this hobby daily and to be able to grade cards at affordable price and get communication you could you could contact us through social media through our audit our chats online through our emails and we answer within 24 hours we pride ourselves in that so those are some of the big things that are important for us is community uh communication and of course affordability those are the biggest three things that we build ourselves up well let's start with the basics grading right so that part itself you know, the four characters, six of the cards, and what I was gonna write for a grading scale was not hard simply because I've been graded so many cards, uh, thousands of them over the years with PSA and BGS specifically. So that part was easy, but putting the rest of it together, really, really hard and time consuming. You know, we had the Jan we started planning it in January 
of 2021. We didn't open until June 1st officially. So it took us six months to figure this all out. But we, we spent, you know, a few months there just every day working on what we needed to work on to get the business open. And I remember I ended up leaving a position I was in and I solely spent about two months straight just marketing the company, getting it out there, talking to people, let them know, you know, what's coming up. Uh, the name we knew right away we wanted, the Grading Authority, we came up with that because this, we have plans down the road where we can use that name. But to, to do the research and get this stuff right, it, it was, there's secrets in the industry. There's not a lot out there um, to figure out how to slab the cards correctly, how you want to label, what programs you want to use to get everything done fast, efficiently, and accurately. So it took a lot longer than I personally suspected. And then, you know, financially, we, you know, we were able to put together enough money to get it started find the right space here in Chichester, um, and then start assembling the team. You know, you'll hear people saying, I'm just gonna start a company. Well, good luck. It's very time consuming to get it done the right way. I think anybody could start anything, but to do it the right way, uh, it takes a lot, long time. So like I said, it's a good six month chunk of time before we said, here's our idea, let's get serious, to okay, now we actually can officially open the doors and take in submissions. Yeah, you know, when I was younger getting into cards, I mean, they were kind of plain Jane cards. It was a picture of, of a dude playing a sport, right? With some stats in the back, which is honestly some of my favorite parts right there. Um, and the industry really started to evolve. Like I said, I think it was in the 90s when they started coming out with insert cards. Topps Chrome came out um, and he started doing refractors and then the 2000s hit and then it started really getting bigger and bigger with Interesting cards, you know, like maybe if it was a jersey or a patch card, you know, a game used memorabilia, really cool stuff. To the 2000s, right, where they started coming out with autograph cards, patch cards, game used cards, game worn. But then grading came out to legitimize the cards in certain aspects of it, right? What makes your card uh, worth more monetarily or in the eyes of the beholder outside of, you know, being a numbered parallel? What if, what if you're a Tom Brady rookie card how is yours worth more or better than this guy's Tom Brady card? Well, I think grading, which was created, I believe, in 99 by PSA first, don't quote me on that, but um, legitimizes the card and the aspects of it, right? I think that we started looking at grading our cards 10 years ago. And uh, Jason and I would, would sit over the past 10 years, mind you, sit at his house at his, uh, at his dining room table with just stacks of cards, just stacks of cards, and we would just go through them and kind of grade them ourselves. And um, we found, a really, really high return rate on nines and tens coming back from these big guys. And what I think is great about grading is not only to protect the card and grade the card, uh, obviously there's resale value flippers, but I think you get to display them a better with protection. But again, if you're at a show where two people are saying, hey, here's my card. Well, if one's a nine and one's an eight, you, you understand that, okay, the nine's probably worth more in a little better condition. You may want a 10 and, and opt to wait to get that 10. So I think the grading legitimizes and helps that. Fast forward to today in the bubble, the bubble just took off. The industry in every type of card went up through the roof. Sports, Pokemon, heck, Digimon. Uh, we, we're seeing a big boom in um, MetaZoo, right? That's another one out there right now. And, and there's more ones coming out. There's more that I probably didn't mention, so I apologize if I didn't mention them. DC, Marvel, right? So the boom went through the roof on every collectible. Heck, WWE just came out with a debut edition in Prism. It was the hottest thing, right? So again, how do you separate that mass production um, of cards and how is your card better or different than the next person? It's not necessarily better. I think you're gonna see a lot of companies now adopting, and eBay's already started it, uh, grading, right? If you have a card that's worth over $200, you wanna sell it and it's not graded by a legitimate grading company, it has to go through a process with them to get it legitimized before it goes to the to protect the seller, especially with everybody trying to knock things off these days. So I think the hobby's changed in that aspect where there's more people in it for the money than there used to be where it was just a hobby, right? So now there's more people in from the money, which creates some negativity in the regards to money. Some people look at it as a money uh, feud, but then you have a lot more people that are motivated to try to fake things and counterfeit things, which grading companies have to be wary of. So big difference from there in fakes from the 90s. I feel like it, it goes in waves where you're gonna have uh, a time in the market where everyone's selling off and, and, and just trying to flip. And then there's, it kind of levels out a little bit. And I think people focus a little bit more on collecting, um, but it, it's, it goes in cycles. Um, myself personally, I, I don't really sell much. I, I'm a collector. So like if I grade cards, um, it's just for my PC. We'd like to obviously grade cards, but we didn't necessarily sell them all. 
a lot of the cards that we graded were for our own personal collection. I mean, I, I, now I'm a Matt Ryan guy. You know, some of those cards that I graded are worth less than the grading fee, but for me, I wanted to collect them. Like, I don't have much interest in getting into selling at all, it's just more of a hassle for me. Um, but that's kind of what's nice about TGA is like, I feel like that we're built for the collector. Um, because everyone knows value comes with time, right? So sometimes people say like, you know, or, you know, TGA cards are not selling for what PSA cards sell for. Well, no kidding. Like these guys have been around for decades. We've been around for a year now. So I think that, you know, we're really catered to the collector. And again, that value will come in, in some time. Company's going great. All you guys have to do is follow our socials and you'll see the rise of TGA globally. It's with partners in Europe, partners in Australia, partners of course across all across America. So as far as TGA is concerned, it's built the last and it's going to be one of the ones that makes that of, I call it the boom of grading companies from the, um, the COVID era, right? And we have some major plans uh, in the pipeline. We're not ready to announce them yet because we're still in um, research and development. But I can tell people, stay tuned because there's some big things coming from TGA, um, I'd say in Q3, Q4 of this year. Um, and there'll be announcements coming very soon around that. Well, some of the designs that we have coming up, some of the shows that we have coming up, I think you're gonna find a lot of collectors that are in different segments of collecting, whether it be Marvel, DC, Magic the Gathering. I can think you're gonna see a lot of people wanna to come to us because of the things that we're gonna offer specifically to that genre that pays Odin homage to that genre. Uh, what you guys will like. And we have other plans too, possibly comic books, hint, hint. You don't ever know. There's a lot of things coming down the road for us, but all you have to do is pay attention to our socials and follow it, and you can keep up with it. The team here at TGA is, is fantastic. We've been very fortunate to be able to find the right talent um, that are willing to learn new things. Uh, you know, being in New England, there's, there's no grading companies around aside from us. So finding graders with experience is nearly impossible. So, you know, we look for good candidates for whether it's grading or data research or right down to you know our design team. We're looking for people that are passionate about the industry, people that have been collecting their whole lives. So that's the coolest thing, right? So Mark and I, when we decided to start the team, we made a, a rule. Any that we, anybody that we hire, except for the office manager, um, has to have some involvement in the hobby, whether it's Pokemon, whether it's sports, whether it's Marvel, Whatever it is, we want them to be an actual hobbyist too. So when they're here working at the job, they not only enjoy it, but they know some of the things they're talking about, right? And it's kind of cool to come to a job every day where you get to see things that maybe you've wanted to own or, or you know, a car, you're like, oh, that's great. And you get to see it firsthand and, and not only grade it, but just see it. So I think it's important for us to have everybody that we interview and take on here at TGA be in the hobby first and foremost, like Mark and myself were when we started the hobby and then they go through the TGA uh, training program. But the current team that we have, they're amazing. Um, and most of these guys and girls have been with us since you know almost the very beginning. Um, we're hitting one year anniversaries now and we have one year anniversaries on the calendar for the next few months. So um, it's not a place where people come and work for a couple months and then leave. We have a really good atmosphere. It's very, it's very chill, very laid back, but um, everyone's busy doing work and doing the right work. Um, I'm extremely proud of this team. I couldn't be any more proud of this team. I'm, I'm very excited to see where we go this year and uh, see what other new teammates that we're gonna be bringing on. Some of the cool stories, we have one of our guys here that's uh, spent eight years in Japan. So he's very, um, he can speak Japanese very well. And he knows a lot about those cards and some of the statistics that blow our minds away when we're labeling them. Some of the rare ones where they came from, from some tournaments. You know, we have guys that have worked at card shops and still do part time. So they're involved in every new set and every new thing that comes up. We have a guy that uh, moved all the way up here from New Orleans, right? He moved here from New Orleans from New Hampshire to work for TGA. So a lot of cool stories with TGA and its employees. Originally, I heard from TGA is actually from Mark, one of the owners. Um, he actually reached out to me when I was self-employed and kind of gave me the opportunity of managing this company and just wanted to see like how we would grow and stuff like that. I work at a card shop as a second job and uh, I met Mark, one of the owners, while working and I was talking about grading cards because I'm a, a small content creator and I was talking about grading cards with some of the customers and uh, he brought up that him and Jason, he got, just referred to him as a partner at the time, were starting a grading company. And I was like, hey, I mean, when you guys need some more employees, let me know. 
and uh, he was so impressed with my knowledge of multiple TCGs and grading already that I uh, we, we exchanged emails and just started talking from there. Just looking for something closer to home. I was getting uh, closer to retirement age, so I was looking for something not as uh, physically demanding as factory work. Uh, and I was flipping through on things within a 20, 50 mile radius, and I saw an ad for a card grader, and I thought that was really weird. There were no card grading companies in New England, never mind New Hampshire. Um, so I read the ad, as they were looking for somebody that had Pokemon knowledge and sports card knowledge. I didn't have any Pokemon knowledge, but I've been a sports card collector since the early 70s. Um, my father-in-law and I had a B&M uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s, so I knew sports cards and grading them. We graded them ourselves. Um, so I reached out, um, and within a couple of days, Mark called me back. Most of the jobs I've worked up till now were like factory related and uh, 95% of the jobs I've had, management and the owners weren't exactly the best. Mark and Jason are fantastic. They hop on the floor. Uh, they make you, make you just feel like you're more than just an employee to them. Like, it's a lot of fun. The atmosphere is fun. They actually make it fun for me to work here and stuff and their energy kind of pushes on to me and I kind of push that onto the grading floor and make sure everybody has that high morale and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So I think it's just fun and energizing, I guess, working here. It kind of makes you want to keep working and not stop working. Uh, Mark and Jason are easy to work for. They're regular guys, they're collectors, just like we are. So we all have something in common. And the atmosphere of the team, uh, it's, it's almost like uh, a second family or like a whole new group of best friends, in all honesty, and I love my job. I actually wake up excited, and if I'm late, I'm actually concerned. So it, it, it's definitely a place that I'd like to see grow and grow with. Where do you get to take your hobby and do it as your job? I mean, there aren't too many people that get to do that. I love my job. Um, it's, a, it's something I can do for a very long period of time and not have to worry about, well, it's time to retire. Well, I don't have to retire. I can keep doing this as long as I want to do it. Just seeing some cards I never thought I'd see in person, uh, some of the most rare cards in Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, actually being able to, to hold them, like and look at them, examine them, and then give them a grade, never, never knowing that I'd actually see one before. It, it's just mind blowing. I get to see all the cards come by, and I get to see how uh, people grade cards and stuff like that. So you, you kind of get to see the behind the scenes stuff. I work at a card shop and I sell trading cards. I get to see other trading cards and, and I get to see some end of it. And then the grading aspect, it, I, I get to basically play with trading cards all day, every day and give them like grades and watch them be encapsulated. And sometimes we see uh, submissions come through that are for gifts. So it's like, it's kind of cool to see that these are more than just collectibles to some people, but they're like uh, memories and like moments in time. This job is basically, I started as a collector. So when I started working here, everything was new to me. And so I like to say this job was more of a educational purpose. Um, I like to say that obviously consistency is key with this job. Um, I've also learned to appreciate all the different types of cards coming in here, like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Flesh and Blood. Like, that's the type of stuff I've never actually seen or opened as a kid, you know? I was mostly into sports and Pokemon, so I, I, I like to see all the different types of cards coming in here, and it makes you really appreciate that. Some are more into the TCG, and some are more into the sports, and now I'm starting to get acclimated to the CCG, TCG end of it. Um, so I'm gaining knowledge from both ends and it's fun. So before I worked here, uh, whenever I'd send cards in to get graded, I'd always be like, why this, why that? And now that I actually am here and I see them a little more closely, there's a lot more to it than, uh, than what I thought it was for grades. And uh, I'm a little bit more understanding of all, all my previous submissions. 
the grading process on a large scale is a lot more involved than it is if you're uh, in a B&M, so to speak. Um, you have tens of thousands of cards that are passing through your hands. Um, and it's not for my benefit, it's for a customer's benefit. So there's a lot more uh, Q&A involved in this kind of thing. Um, and it has to remain consistent. I've learned that there is a very large TCG community, not only in this country, but in the world. I was absolutely amazed at how dedicated, um, quality conscious, um, how people take such great care of their cards nowadays compared to when I started doing it in, even up into the 80s when they first started to introduce penny sleeves and top loaders. Before that, cards were kept in a shoe box or a cardboard box with an elastic band wrapped around them. Now, it's, it's wonderful. You see kids opening up packs and as soon as they open the pack, it goes right into a penny sleeve and then right into a top loader or something. People take such good care of their cards, it's, it's amazing. From what I'm being told and from what I can see, people love us. From what I've heard with uh, the card shop I work at, we're like in top five, which is amazing for the fact that we've been around for a year now and our, our progression with helping out customers who have uh, had problems and uh, the development of all the new labels and every us just trying to improve so much so quickly and we're doing what I think is a is a good job at it and pacing ourselves as well. I can see the company being top three and uh, I hope to be with it the entire growth. I hope that uh, I've been seeing nothing but uphill. So I'm hoping to see more of that over the next few years. Well, I see the company only going up. I there, there's no way it can't. Um, how is to continue what we're doing uh, and doing it to the best of our ability and show the customer that they can put their trust in us as they would other grading companies that have been around longer. Um, we've had to deal on a personal level with those other companies. so. We know what we expect from them, so in turn, I know what customers expect from us. Um, Mark and Jason, they know what they're doing. Uh, they've been in the co collecting um, a very long time, and they know what customers want, and that's what they're going to give them. We're introducing new labels and just new stuff or new sets coming out, so I think with everything going on in this day and age, we're just evolving with everything else going down the road. So I kind of see us being a big grading company down the road. I see this company really kind of being a, a force in the industry. Um, and people will look at TGA as that innovative company that maybe other companies are gonna come out and try to mimic or something like that. Um, and I'm not saying that to pound my chest, I'm saying it because I'm confident in our abilities and what we have planned for this year. Um, I just see big things for TGA and we're just built at the core very strong. So our goals and things that I see, I see TGA having its initial and main point here in America. I see us having one somewhere across seas, maybe in Europe, we're not sure. So I see, and possibly one on the West Coast. So I see three branches of TGA. I see us expanding substantially in the TCG and sports realm. And I see us adding other things like you know, example comic books is something we've talked about adding down the road a branch of that um but with the partners that we're making and you know with our partner a drive um we see a lot building especially in the tcg community but i can say this just buckle up and get ready because it's going to be a an interesting couple of years in the industry and here at tga not only good for us but good for consumers and people that have dedicated to grading their cards with us in our community i mean we have our own community in the back of our website dedicated strictly to tga's community so i think the fact that we have people signing up and interacting specifically in a community for TGA itself that nobody offers is fantastic. The community's been nothing but short of great. If you're thinking about grading, I want you to think differently. 
Grading at its, at its core is great for cards, right? It legitimizes the card and it puts a number on it of a one to 10 scale for resaleability, for hobby issues. But I want you to think farther than just grading. When I find a partner that I'm gonna grade with, where are they gonna be X amount of years from now? Where am I gonna be X years and amount of years from now? And how is our partnership going to hold and what's that gonna look like? I think you look to TGA for more than just grading. I think as a community, you can talk to us. As the owners of the company, you can talk to us. So I think if you look to TGA, you're gonna have a lot of fun besides just grading with the company. And I think, especially if you're an influencer, I think it's all about having fun as opposed to just looking at this as a business. But I think if you're looking for more than just a grading partner specifically for grading and that's it, we don't talk to you, have enough, absolutely, uh, you, we could do that. But I think you get a lot more out of TGA and when you're shopping around for grading companies, consider us for that. Yeah, I just wanna say I truly appreciate each and every customer that, that we've met, that have not met. Um, maybe we've come across each other on social media or maybe they've come into the offices to do submissions, but I really appreciate everybody. Um, it means a lot to us when someone puts their trust into TGA to get their cards graded. I mean, we're talking about cards that people might've had for 20 years, 30 years. And, you know, for them to put their trust in us, it means a lot to us. And, um, you know, we're looking to build long-term relationships with our customers. We, we, we appreciate each and every customer, but we really appreciate when they're coming back for that second time, for that third time, for the fourth time, and uh, just really expand their collections with TGA. So um, I have nothing but love and nothing but great things to say about our customers. It's a great community that we've built. Um, if you're not on our Discord already, definitely check out the Discord, check out our Twitter. We just have an amazing, amazing community that we've built, and I know it's just gonna keep growing and growing and growing um, with some of the new partners that we're, we're bringing on in our affiliate program a lot of the local card shops that are signing up. And I say local, it could be local to us. It could be local to the people in Belgium or New Zealand, Australia, um, and all across the country. So um, I, I'm very grateful for the community that we've built.